Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Watch With Us channel and our podcast slash webcast. And I've got a very special guest today, my friend Tim Temple, who many of you know from whether it be television or uh, talk about watches or many of his other watch ventures and uh, experiences. So, uh, Tim, thanks for coming by. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I've been I've been looking forward to this. So it's uh, let's get into the adventure. Yeah, man. So I got to tell you, the first time I my first experience of of Tim Temple was back when I was in retail many years ago. I had I had one particular client, but I had clients who always say, "Hey, you know, I was watching Shop NBC, or I, I, I believe that's what the platform was or that you were selling watches on on television." and uh, and he actually bought a lot of watches from you. And then turns out my uncle probably bought 100 watches from me over the years. And um, so that's kind of my first experience to Tim Temple. But, you know, was that your first foray in the watch world? How did you get involved in watches? Um, I've always had a love for watches. Uh, I remember probably my earliest experience was roughly five. And uh, I was actually playing under, I don't recommend this, by the way, <laughs> playing underneath an, a YMCA. And I found a watch in the dirt and uh, ended up finding out much later it was a mechanical watch and I was, I've lost it a long time ago. But uh, that kind of, even at that young age, I, I could figure out that it was a machine and that it told time and you could wear it. And that was just sort of interesting. And then all that stuff just went on the shelf for a while and I got into uh, music and as you can see, that's kind of stuck around. Yeah. And um, so in the, uh, I got into marketing uh, probably in the mid '90s, and I started working with some of the high-end watch dealers as part of that. It wasn't that I was getting uh, into watches; it was just one of the segments I was with was just marketing these various retailers, among them being high-end watches. And one of the guys really sensed I had a love for watches. Um, a gentleman in St. Martin, but I'll give him a plug. Uh, Lauf Matani, who owns a great watch store in uh, St. Martin in the Caribbean. And he would just start teaching me about watches. He would go into a vault and he'd bring out like a brigade. And he'd go, that's $85,000, but here's why. And that was really my, my foray into the, into the high end because prior to that, um, I was, you know, I, I barely knew what quartz was. I kind of did, but not really. And I knew it was more accurate than a mechanical and so on. So th that kind of came up through there. And that also cross pollinated because I had this uh, uh, career going where I was doing, uh, I guess the official term is video retail, which is, you know, you sell stuff on TV. Yeah. And Around 1998, there was an opportunity where, and this is where the history kind of gets convoluted, uh, because I'm I'm often credited for being the first. That's not true. There was already a watch show going, but it was also on the verge of being canceled. And I had an opportunity to take it over, and I I knew it was going to be canceled, but in the, but I knew these guys that were sitting on this show knew way more than I did, which almost anybody did at that point. Right. And I thought, well at least I could learn something. And this was a show where they were selling antique pocket watches, actual antiques. So everything was one-offs. Okay. So we'd have somebody off to the side and they would just hand this to us and they'd go, uh, this is a ball so-and-so uh, and that one sold. And then they would just, it was just this machine like that. But in the course of the, of the dialogue, I started picking up on it. And then um, this was, uh, by the way, with a gentleman uh, named Jeff Hess. Yeah. Uh, you, you should probably know, right? A lot of you guys might. I mean, this is, if you don't know, he's the guy that wrote, among other things, the unauthorized biography of Rolex. And this guy is a walking thesaurus in wristwatches. Right. Um, which is why I will never, ever call myself an expert because I've met experts. Yes. And he's one of them. Yeah, you know, I've I've had a chance to hang out with the with Thomas Pressure and some of the living greats, and you do that for five minutes, you realize you don't know anything. One hundred percent. I've always felt that way <laughs> about Jeff. I've always felt that way about Ray Grennan up in Newport. Uh, right. Just there are some guys who are encyclopedias. Uh, uh, the guy from uh, Godberg's Watchbox, uh, uh, Tim, I believe his name is. Uh, you know, the guy who wears a sunglass upside down. A a absolute encyclopedia, and I I totally understand what you mean because. You know, I've been in the game for, for a long time. And, you know, just when I think I start, you know, that I'm, I know stuff, you spend some time with a guy like that. And next thing you know, you're like, well, I'm, I'm a novice. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a that's a healthy thing. I, I think that's what inspires uh, watch guys and girls to talk to other watch guys and girls. Because 100%. You hear information. Just like I personally, I don't like hanging out with everybody that thinks like I do. No. Um, I think that fosters, uh, it, it's, it, it's a lazy way to think. Yeah. Um, because you're, you're not going to get any pushback and you can spout the, the biggest ignorance or whatever. And everybody goes, it's like, no, so either challenge what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking and you're either going to reinforce what I'm thinking, or you're going to make me reassess what I'm thinking. And that both of those, I think are healthy, uh, which is way off topic, but anyway, that's uh, the thing. So Jeff on the show, now he had an idea. He goes, I got six of some. I don't remember what it was. Let's just see if we can sell multiples. And it turns out we could. And then he would bring in more. And uh, let's just fast forward this thing. So next thing you know, uh, at the time, it would have been Value Vision. It was subsequently uh, to rename uh, Shop NBC. Uh, this empire really started to build. Right. And it ended up being, you know, the 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 genesis of what is now I think one of the biggest retailers uh, in the world, but yeah, I was on the uh, on on the spearhead uh, for that. Yeah, it just generated from there, man. That's that's fascinating. Now, um, now you no longer do that. I don't. Okay. I uh, <laughs> how to word this properly. Uh, <laughs> it was not my idea to no longer do that. I'll put it like uh, like that. Okay. And, um, so I left and. It was interesting that the very next day I started getting calls from uh, watch brands because I'd maintained relationships over the over the years. Sure. And this is what was the immediate genesis of what we now know as talk about watches dot com, uh, which for those of you who don't know is is something that I uh, basically founded and and have now developed some great partners with. Uh, because what I wanted to do is th this was my theory. What if you took Everything that I know about video retail, and at this point I had 30 years in the business, and so I said, but you throw away everything that you hate, because something that I discovered in that business was that they were mired in 20th century tech. Yeah. They were just obsessed with it. Big studios with a lot of copper cable and big lighting, and it, it, frankly, in 2018, 2019, uh, et cetera, you, you don't need any of that noise. No, I agree. And, you know, it, it, like I'm talking, you know, like telling you something, right? Because now you've got the internet. And, and so the point I'm, I'm making is among other things, and there's a lot of things that, that I didn't like about it that I jettisoned right away. But one of them was, is there a way to create a website where collectors of all faiths can, can meet? And I, I know you and I off camera have talked a bit about this. There really wasn't a lot of that going on. And uh, so that was one thing, but also how to differentiate that. What if we could make a website that isn't just another deal of the day or isn't just another retailer? Do both of those, but back it up with custom video. Right. And then invite watch guys to be a part of the show, just be on the show and literally talk about watches. By the way, the, the reason it's called talkaboutwatches.com is I got into a habit that I picked up on years ago. I would always open the show on television with, hey, everybody, let's talk about watches. Yeah. And then, so that day when I'm getting the calls, I just went on a URL search and it was available. <laughs> That's how it got named and it's stuck and it's actually worked out really well because I like T-A-W. I think that looks good. Yeah. And so th that's kind of how it came about is like you, you, you jettison everything that you, you didn't like and it makes us a lot leaner and meaner and uh, it, it's the growth has been huge and I think it's due to, uh, I think we've struck something among watch guys of a lot of different levels that's fantastic uh, you can collect there you can share ideas there there there's custom video just another website we've, we've created something different as have you uh, by the way and again i mentioned this the other day when you and i were talking is uh, i think that one of the things that you're doing is filling a niche that needed to be taken care of to create a place where you've got watch guys and girls of different uh stratospheres and you've got different uh levels of, of of education and so on but where can you meet in in the commonality and, and share the kindred spirit and and you've achieved that it's pretty cool yeah you know it's i mean for for me i'm I'm the guy that if i if i'm standing in line at 7-eleven i see you wearing a cool watch i'm going to strike up a conversation with you right you know, i just genuinely and like you genuinely enjoy talking about not, not only just the watches themselves but the collecting of it uh of them the you know, the history of the brands and, and just, and different ideas, you know, 
I, I always I always laugh when there's these watch snobs online, whether it be in Facebook or on forums or wherever else, and oh, and they're they're snobby and they, you know, they've got their opinions about what's good, what's not. I mean, we talked about this the other day. I don't care what you're wearing. I don't care if it's a ten dollar watch or a ten million dollar watch and anywhere in between. You know, I just love the hobby of it and the collecting of it. What I also like is that it brings such different people together. You know, I've I've made friends who not not for any other reason, we probably just never would have crossed paths or absolutely we're so different in personalities that we may have never said, Hey, let's let's hang out, let's go get a beer together. But because of our common love of watches, you know, I some of my best friends are made because of watches, you know, and that's uh that's that's fantastic. And you know, I think I think like like the way I feel about both Watch With Us and, and Watch Gauge, which I'm doing, I feel like you're in the right place at the right time, right? Because, you know, 10 years ago, this may not have worked because social media wasn't as strong. Exactly. And 10 years from now, everybody's going to be trying to do it. And, um, and I think that, you know, like the way I feel about what I'm doing with the different things I'm doing, I think you're in the right place at the right time. You're the right person to do it. So that's pretty awesome. Well, uh, thank you for saying it, man. I, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, I think that we're, we are going to be launching to the next level fairly soon. I think part of the brilliance of that, as will you, is we're going to be using a tech that we don't even know exists as we're doing the show today. Right. And Absolutely. It, it's, being where you and I are creating what we're creating is talking to our customers every day, talking to our audience base every day, but also staying on the bleeding edge of where, where tech is going. And whereas I view video retail, they're, they, they've got so many, and I, by the way, this is not picking on any particular channel. There's one thing I know from every channel. I've been to a lot of them around the world. Yeah. They're all clinging to the 20th century. Yeah. All of them. They, they spent too much money on the cameras. They spent too much money on that copper cable. And we're just not letting go of it. And that's the way it is. You know, that they, they pay, they're paying the production team, their editors, their you know, the airtime and all that stuff. But you have to think about it this way, too. The same thing translates to traditional watch retail, no? Sure, you know? sure. It does. And brick and mortar retail in general. I mean, if you want to look at what video retail, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm, uh, I can say what I want now. Uh, is is uh, Cable and satellite takes a piece of everything. Yeah. And it's one of, and maybe the only, to my knowledge, it is the only channel set up where instead of, cable and satellite paying for the process they get paid for the process right you've got that overhead plus you've got your your margin requirements and then you've got these massive staffs in the studios and that, so this was literally what was going on in the first day i created taw is just, it just you know it's that epiphany moment yeah like, i don't need any of that no i mean look you're cutting out 80 percent of your expenses if right not more. That's Which fantastic. is why we're so ultra competitive. Yeah. Well, because you can, you can come to me and you say, I've got, I'm just make something up. I've got 10 watches and I'd, I'll do it. You know, I don't have to go to a committee. I don't have to get it so-and-so. I don't have to say, well, the margin is this and so-and-so is that. And then you've got to send in the sample and then the QA is going to, and that's another thing too. Work with people you know. So your QA is already taken care of. Yes. Uh, there isn't all the superfluous shipping and everything else. And it just, it's leaner and meaner. And you, by the way, you know who wins? Everybody. Everybody. Consumer wins. You get a better watch for the money. You get education included. Uh, in fact, that was, uh, talk a little bit about, I don't know how many of you guys have picked up on the show I do now, but it opens, every show opens with this. Uh, oh, ring label. I love that. And it says, "Warning: This make uh, this fo the following may contain frightening pieces of information." Yeah, that's because the last network I was at, when they decided to get rid of me, this was the actual stated reason. And they got they got rid of me over the phone, by the way. Um, as they were hanging up, this is what was yelled in the phone: "You frighten the audience with information." <laughs> now, first of all, that's one of the greatest sentences ever constructed in the English language. <laughs> That's an amazing sentence. Yeah. And then I went, that's that's a that's extraordinary. And so that's why I opened the show that way. So it's been an inside joke, and now maybe it's a little less inside, but that's I'm, I'm gonna tell you something I've never said. Yeah. That warning, the first time I saw that on the video, I go, I, I saw it, I'm like, damn it, why didn't I think of that? That's that's I love that warning. <laughs> and this 
Like this it doesn't make you feel better. I didn't think of it either. <laughs> well, no, I, no, you got it. It's great. I mean, but I'm thinking, I'm like, wow, what an attention grabber. That is so cool. Damn it, I missed the boat on that. And right. It, it's just the, the, the fact that uh, that that it was uh, that I was actually sharing information was, was, was so cool. detrimental. I love um, that was fascinating it still fascinates me because to, I, I'm such a believer in the informed consumer and including myself you know I'm sitting here in my uh, uh, recording studio in Nashville all right every piece of gear that I see you know that, that's back here and lots you can't see um, I researched everything yeah and I still got some of it wrong but I, I was informed yes I went and talked to others and I think that people uh, like one of the questions I do on my show, as you know, is, is I will say, what what advice do you give to collectors? Um, one of the advices, uh, the pieces of advice I, I give is, is know what you're buying. And I know that sounds trite, and I don't mean it like that. Um, who are you buying it from? Yeah. Um, how long have they been around? What's the brand? What's their story? I mean, these are really basic things. And if you'll just, and by the way, this is not something that I think you're going to have to spend a lot of time in this drudgery. I, watch collecting should always be fun. I was going to, I was just going to say that that's part of the fun is yes. learning and researching and, and seeing what people are saying about it online. You know, if, you know, everybody sees a picture of a watch scrolling through their Facebook feed or whatever, and they see a watch, oh, that's good looking. And then you start researching that and saying, okay, what's it made of? And that's part of the fun of watch collecting. I mean, why do it if you're not going to enjoy that process? It's, I'm sure the same goes with, with audio equipment and with sure. any, other, any other collectible or, or purchasable thing for that matter. It, it, it really does. And, it, it, um, it, and you know, to keep this in just in line with watch collecting, I, I think one of the important things that's going on is that the, the more informed you are, you're going to make better and wiser decisions uh, for your, your collection. Sure. Um, uh, case in point, have you looked at your collection from a, uh, an appreciation or depreciation standpoint? Um, I personally never present watches as investments. You'll never hear me use the I word in anything I do. Nor do I. Because I think that's wrong. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that, that some, and again, some of my collection hasn't appreciated. Right. Like my quinting is worth many multiples. I mean, there's several that I've done, if I, which I won't sell, but if I ever did, I would do really well. Yeah. But that's not the point. I, I, I don't trade these as commodities. And, nope. and I, I think, and I've heard this over the years, and I'm very pleased to say I've never personally done it. Nope. But I have heard it any number of times. You need to invest in this. And this, this is such a great investment that you're going to pass on. And say, no, no, it's not. Yeah, I agree. Or you can have a lot of fun with it, and it doesn't mean that you can um, – not end up with something that can be really valuable. And by the way, as I just mentioned, there are instances where you might see an appreciation, but I can tell you, you know, if you want to minimize the downside is just know what you're buying. A hundred percent. You know, and I buy it right the first time. And that's what I did when I founded TAW. And I know that's similar to what you're doing. For sure. I mean, in all my years in traditional retail and the high end, anytime somebody came to me and said, Hey, well, I'm looking to invest in a watch. I'm like, don't invest in a watch, invest in the stock market, invest in real estate, do not invest in a watch. And, and I have also heard salespeople say, well, this watch is going to be a good investment. That is, to me, that yeah. is the cheapest sales tactic when it comes to selling a watch, because the truth of the matter is nobody knows what the watch market is going to do. You know, watches that people thought were going to go to the moon are in the toilet and vice versa. Yep. So, you know, when people approach me and say, hey, I'm looking to invest in a watch, I'm like, don't buy a watch then. Buy a watch because you enjoy the watch, you know, and uh, I totally agree with you. And, and for those watching, if any, anybody selling you a watch ever says it is going to be a good investment, don't walk away from them, run. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely, that's, a, that's such a valid, sage piece of advice right there. Uh, watches are, are not investments, and they may or may not go up. And honestly, they're probably not going to increase in value, but it doesn't mean you can't minimize the downside. And, and back to your original point, which is you should be having fun with this anyway. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to have fun and also see, you know, like the massive degradation. The, the degradation. So you should, uh, a little research and knowledge, know who you're buying from, and, and you're going to do 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 great um yeah i think the, the advice that you give is really smart and i don't even view you mentioned earlier like saying investment is a is a, a cheaper a bad sales tactic I, I view it as fraudulent 
I agree. Um, it's not even tactic. I mean, I've been in sales for a lot of years, but I, I don't sell watches as investments. I, I guess we're kind of overstating this now. A hundred percent. Yeah. You should just have fun. Like in my, in my collection, let's talk about fun. Like the show you and I did the other day, um, one of my like goofy watches, I'm, I'm still not wearing it to, to, today, but the, uh, but I do wear it is, is the Homer watch. Yeah. I got it a drive through at Burger King. Yeah. And that's just a really funky, weird watch. And it's, it's great. And then on the other hand, I move up through pieces. I've, you know, I've got hundred bucks and 200 and a few other higher end stuff and, and whatever. Um, I also, well, let me get your take on this because we come, I, I think initially from, from two different backgrounds. I've, I've always believed in the diversity in a, in a collection. And by the way, this is me personally. I'm not telling you guys out there, if you really have your heart set on, I collect mostly one or two brands. That's cool too. Yeah. Uh, are, are you more of a, of a diverse thing or do you like, um, I really keep it down to a certain level or type of brand or what's your take? That's funny. Turning the tables on me to question me. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You know, these, uh, you know it's funny. It, it, whatever I was doing five years ago and then 10 years ago and then 15 years ago is totally different than what I do now. Um, and, and it's really strange how my watch collecting habits and my tastes have, have, have changed so drastically over the years. Um, currently, because of the business I'm in, most of the watches I have are micro brands and then the micro brands I carry. I do have other micro brands that I just appreciate and bought. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as we, as we did, let me, let me just interject here. When we referenced the other day, the talk the other day for the viewers watching this now, uh, I was a guest on Tim's show, Talk About Watches, which is going to air Thursday, August 1st, uh, 9 o'clock, I believe. Yeah. But that being said, you know, I've got some higher end pieces. I've got an Omega. I've got a Louis Monet. I used to have a bunch of other higher end watches. For me, it's, I don't have a mission. I don't have a goal. I don't have, I don't have a strategy. I, something grabs me and then I strive for it. Um, and, and these days it just happens to be more affordable micro brands for multiple reasons, mainly because that's what I sell, but also because, um, being an entrepreneur and, and being only two years old, I, I really, my, my, my funds are best not spent on 10 or $15,000 watches like they might've been in the past. Um, yeah. So it's kind of funny. I mean, I remember years and years and years ago, my wife and I was, before we had kids, my wife and I were going to a wedding or somewhere and, and I had this watch box and I said, you know, I said, honey, which, which watch should I wear with this suit? And she said, pick the blue one. And I looked down and I realized out of like the 12 watches in that 12 watch box, like 11 of them had blue dials. You know what I mean? So, and my collection is nothing like that today. So it, it's, it's strange. It's evolved so much. And, um, you know, I, I enjoy that evolution and I don't, I'm very open-minded where I used to say, you know, I'll never wear you know, let's say a uh, buy compacts chronograph. Now I love them. And just as an example, I never, I never put something in my head and say, that's, that's solid. The only thing I, the only thing I don't personally like is diamonds on a watch. And that's just me personally. And I don't love all gold watches because I'm really, I don't honestly, it looks terrible on my pale skin. And, uh, and that's just not me, but who knows? Ask me in five years, I might be wearing a gold to watch with diamonds. I don't know. You know, well, I think that comes back to the, you know what, what I consider part of the magic of, of, of watch collecting. You've got so many brands that are uh, competing in the marketplace and, and some I think are, are doing cookie cutter and are very state ideas. And then there's others that are, are really innovative, uh, which, which I think brings us to micro brands. Cause I, I'm a big, like you, I'm a big fan of the micro brand. Right. Uh, it's to me, this is almost the irony is that the micro brand in many cases, they, they don't come from a huge amount of money and so on, but that's still where the innovation is. Sure. Uh, not uniquely, but many times uh, it, it is. Like one of the brands that I champion every chance I get is Nord Zeit Machine. Yeah. Um, definitely a micro brand. One brilliant watchmaker in Switzerland makes absolutely everything. Right. And he reinvents how to tell time with every watch. And the moment I discovered him, and, and I know you just mentioned that you'll get, you'll get like your target on something. It's like, I'm getting one of those. Yeah. And I ended up selling a lot of the collection and, you know, just worked it out and just made it happen. And uh, so I, I do look like that. Oh, speaking of selling collections, yeah. uh, do you hang on to things forever to get a, a bigger well, number or do you trade out or sell out? Or what, what, I, what do you think I, on I, that? Because I, I tend to trade mine around. Me too. I, 
I, I actually love, you know, and it's, it's always spontaneous with me, right? Like I'll go to lunch with a good friend of mine and I'll say, oh, gee, what is that? And, oh, and they'll take it off. And it's a Zodiac, uh, the new sea wolf or whatever it may be. I'm like, man, I like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, let me know if you ever want to get rid of that. You know, a week later, they're like, all right, what do you have in the collection you want to trade for? You know, and, and, you know, like we were talking about the money thing and the investment thing. To me, it's not about how much am I going to get for it or anything like that. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, well, I've got these two watches. I'll trade you for that one or vice versa, or I'll just pay you for that watch. And I, I, my collection is, my collection probably literally rotates completely once every six months to a year. With, oh, the, wow. with the exception of, uh, you know, pieces like we talked about on your show, which is just a handful of, uh, you know, really sentimental piece to me that I'll never, ever, ever leave my sure. collection until, until I'm long gone, you know, but, but my daily wear stuff, like my, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of going after it, getting it, enjoying it, and then let, letting somebody else enjoy it while I go after something else. I think that's a really healthy way to do it. I, I have to admit that I, I tend to be a, a lot more cl kind of clinical about it. Yeah. Um, I will go, first of all, I will just let the collection ride for a while. And it's not on purpose, it just is. And then I will get another watch. Is obviously the, the, the higher, at least for what is me, I consider higher. And I know that's yeah. all is fluctuating. Relative, very relative. You're talking to. Um, and then I say, okay, I've got to find a way to get that. And then I'll start going through the collection. What have I not worn in a while? Yeah. And is it sentimental or not? And all of a sudden, I find, okay, I can put that, 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 that. And then I will just contact people i know that buy watches or i'll do auction sites or things like that for the record by the way i never have sold these through taw and i have no plans to yeah uh, just to get that little caveat out there but uh, and then I'll, I'll get the new one and then you know the whole cycle starts up uh, again yeah I, I have to admit and i do think it's really cool that watches have a lot of sentimental value for various reasons and i think they're really important uh, uh, they can be engraved for you or from a very specific special individual and so on. i don't really have a lot of experience with that in, in watches i just get them because i like them yeah, and it wasn't so much sentimental. Even though I have a couple I've received as gifts, and like you, that they're, they're just not for sale because they were gifted from someone that I greatly appreciate. Right. But other than that, it's like I'm not worn it in a while. Why? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, we can get rid of that one now. So that, that's um, my very unclinical management of uh, of uh, watch collecting. I guess that's cool. That's cool. So. So tell us T A W, right? So yeah. you're doing, you're doing, you've got the website where you sell, you sell watches, sure. right? You've got the YouTube channel. What else? What else? What What should people know about T A W? What your plans are? Where are you going with it? Um. Okay. Uh, Multi-tiered question. Um, first of all, we built T A W from the ground up to be different because one of the things I realized very early on was that the multitude of of watch websites i mean certainly you can acquire watches there and so on but you can't really look at the watches in 3d they'll put up a couple of images and i'm not saying that all of the watches that we show have video though we are working on that but i tried to bring my video retail background into it and, and also my uh, photography background uh because besides the whole music thing uh to get in a little bit of well, what else do i do i hold almost 20 international medals as a photographer wow so I ended up with, um, you know, there's a lot of photography gear and so on. And uh, so I thought, well, this is kind of a happy coincidence. So I, I started really photographing watches in great detail and also using uh, very high def, you know, all Nikon gear, Nikon glass and, and doing really close up videos of. And that began to set us apart right away. And as you and I also talked about, because our marginal requirements are, are much slimmer. I mean, once you get a, a rid of all the tradition where you got, you know, pay this and pay that and that, da, 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 all of a sudden I can move really quick. So that also contributed. So where are we going? We're going to expand. I'll put it like this. Let me just throw this out in general. I don't know who's in your audience right now. Uh, TAW is always looking for brand parts. We, we we don't have exclusive, well, that's not true. We are exclusive with a few brands. But uh, the point is that we have no contractual obligation to say, well, we'll never carry X, Y, or Z. Right. And so we can bring in anybody. Um, I think the record, and, and I should preface this by saying it did not sell, but we did we did have a, a, a $600,000 Dutant for a while. No kidding. Um, 
that was, uh, you know, and it moved on. And I heard a collector in Hong Kong finally got it. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't from us. Uh, so we, we don't know where the, the, the ceiling really is. Okay. Uh, so again, we just bring in something. We think it's good if it, if it works out and we can present something. The way I look at it is, uh, unlike most other websites, you can bring your product onto the show and it's literally a show. Yeah. Um, I'll do a custom video where you can, or whoever can be a guest on the show and you can talk about the product in, in great detail. Then unlike traditional uh, video retail where you're literally timed by the second, um, I don't care. Yeah, it could be if a five minute video, it could be a 30 minute video. Yes, if it takes two, it takes two and, and whatever. So you don't have to feel pressure to rush. You can tell your story, present the product. And so I think again, that separates us uh, from the pack a, a great deal. Uh, this, and I know it's not exactly where you, what, what you asked me, but uh, where are we going? We're gonna expand uh, with uh, brands and categories. And uh, we're looking at a couple other uh, possible uh, partner options, which is going to, uh, and again, I know these are ifs, but it, when it hits, it's going to you know, move us up to the next level. But that, that's basically uh, where we are. Um, very mindful of customer service always. We're very big on the, yeah. on the white glove thing. That's uh, important. very important these days, especially when, yeah, some, exactly. when you're not selling it in person. That is so important because, you know, you got to give that person the, the, the feeling that, they're comfortable buying what they're buying from you, correct? Yep. And, and uh, you know, we, we guys like you and guys like me, we have to bend over backwards. And not, and not that it's an obligation. We do it because we enjoy it. And that's how we want to be treated. Exactly. Yeah. It's so. not people. And that's something else that initially I didn't do for a while was I avoided uh, the, the phone call. Yeah. I just wanted to keep it on the mobile devices and so on. Uh, and we are still extremely mobile savvy, of course. But then it hit me. Uh, again, it's one of the things like I should have thought of this day one. Uh, people need to speak to somebody if they're, they're making a purchase. Not everybody, but some people do. So I set up the program, talk to a watch guy. Mm -hmm. Because, again, it, it's I, I don't want to ever get into the boiler room mentality. Yeah. And if you look at traditional, uh, especially video retail, when and again, I don't care what channel you're watching. When you call them, you're probably not talking to an expert. You're talking to somebody that's just hired to take the order, right? And if you're talking about wristwatches, you need to know: is this going to fit me? What movement is in it, and why? And so on. And these are really honest, great questions. And I'm not knocking the phone setter because they literally don't have that information and level of education themselves. So what if we set it up? So if you call us. Uh, which, for the record, is a uh, eight four four my watch, um, and that's at toll free anywhere in the United States. Cool. You're going to talk to a watch guy. It's yeah. probably going to be me, but if it isn't me, it's going to be somebody else that at least has a working knowledge and can answer your questions. And this is something else I've discovered. I'm not afraid to say I don't know. No, very. Because important. I will find out for you. Very smart. Very very smart. When you know when when I don't care if you're buying cars, watches, or anything else. When you when you have the guy that's got the answer to absolutely everything, chances are he's making up half those answers, right? Yeah, you know, I don't think there's any such animal as a, as the guy that that knows everything. Okay, you know what? You know, here's a question that will actually sort of answer this in a way. Name the best watch of all time. It's it's so relative. Exactly. It's so there is no answer to that question, but I'll bet you've been asked that. I get asked that fairly. What's the What's the best watch to buy? You know the best answer to that? The Homer watch. The Homer Simpson watch <laughs> you got at the drive through You know, when you just come back with a ridiculous answer, you know, that just shows kind of what the question is like. The You know, it's everybody's best watch is so different. And then, and I, that's one of the things I was going to ask you. I'll ask you in a, in a little bit. But, you know, it's so funny when I see people, you know, hey, you know, all the time in these groups, uh, you know, on, online. What's your Grail watch? Grail watches range from a, a three hundred dollar watch to a three million dollar watch in that answer in the thread, you know. So the best watch, the the everything is so relative to the person, you know. It's absolutely relative. And one thing, one thing I want to start doing because because again, our channel is pretty new, and interviewing people is is a new thing for us. One thing I want to do is a couple of rapid fire questions for you to get sure. an idea of just some random things and and and. I don't have them written down. I'm just thinking. All right, there we go. Talking. Lightning round. What is what is your holy grail watch? If somebody handed you a blank check, uh, no questions asked, you had to buy one watch, what is it? Uh, 
<laughs> I should have an immediate answer, and I don't because immediate like I think all right, I, I can give you a short list. Yeah. Um, uh, I've always liked the Richard Mill number eight. Okay. Um, uh, of course, the Paddock Philippe uh, Sky Moon Torbion. Yeah. Would would be on the list, but for me, um, yeah. some people don't get that watch. It's all personal. It's all. Yeah. Uh, what, oh, uh, uh, Thomas pressured Neptune or Nemo, rather. I think it is the one that's the tubes of uh, sapphire. Yep. Uh, I also like the uh, the uh, the. See, I'm just gonna start naming them now. The the Ublo Ferrari. Yep. Uh, and I personally like the uh, Gruber Four C quadruple axis Torbia. Gruber Four C is one of my favorite. Just, just right? they're brilliant. Just to look at them is is mind boggling. You yeah. Know? And, uh, and the rare occasions I've had to see them in person, it's like one of those things where, you know, I, I need it. I need a. I need a seat. I have to sit, and I, you know, it's like wow. And yeah. uh, and then afterwards, you feel like you need a nap. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a very respectable list. Very, very cool. Now, what watch do you no longer have in your collection that you wish you can get back? Oh, I like that question. Um, for pure sentiment, having said earlier that I'm not sentimental necessarily, <laughs> I would love to have back that watch I found in the dirt when I was five. How cool would that be, right? I can't have it. Yeah, and and just imagine yourself looking at this and then saying, "This is where I'm going to be." You yeah, know? It, it actually. Who knew, right? But it, it ended right. up being the, this 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 career, and it was all that. That's where it began. So yeah, that one. All right, cool, very cool. And uh, if you had to pick one particular brand that they said we're going to hire you, you're going to we're going to pay you half a million a year, you're going to come and be the president of. Hmm. <laughs> uh, again, that's um, <laughs> a loaded question. Um, but if I had to pick one just immediately that could actually pay me some of that, uh, Richard Mill. Okay. I, see, I'm a big fan of Richard Mill. I really am. I, I know, I know, I, I hear a lot of about their style being over the top and things like that. But it uh, is. And, and, you know, personal style wise, I don't know that I could wear most of the, most of their watches um, just from a color standpoint and so on and so forth. But just from, uh, a watchmaking standpoint, a technical standpoint. Absolutely love that brand. Um, really quick, I had a good buddy of mine. The buddy I was telling you about early when we first started this video, who introduced me to you back on TV way back in the day, uh, is a good friend of mine, Peter, and he's still a good friend and he was a client for a very long time. Peter had a Richard Mill, and I, I believe it was the RM027, which was a time and date only. He bought that watch way back, brand new, for something like eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars. Wow! And um, it, it was the lightest, most comfortable watch I had ever ever put on my wrist. And back then, I was I was collecting watches of that price range. And um, and I said to him, I, I said to him every time I saw him, if you ever want to get rid of that Richard Mill, give me the right of first refusal. And I'll never forget once I said to him, I was breaking his chops and I was wearing an Audemars at the time. And he said, oh, it's a beautiful uh, Royal Oak. And I said, I will trade you this watch for that Richard Mill any day of the week. He's like, oh, I got rid of it. And I remember distinctly wanting to climb over the counter and strangle him. Um, and he ended up selling it for, for like 22000 I think that same watch is going for multiples of that now. And Oh, I'm sure it is. Absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. So. Let's um let's wrap this up only because I want to keep our viewers uh not you know I want I want to keep it within a time frame that they're going to stick around and watch the whole thing but sure. tell us where we're going to find you where where we can follow you and uh and and all that kind of stuff I would uh, love to hear from you guys uh, you can hit me up um let's see uh phone is 844-699-2824 that's uh, 844 my watch uh, hit me up email uh, info at talkaboutwatches.com and also talkaboutwatches.com on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram. Perfect. And the website is naturally uh, talkaboutwatches.com. Talk about and there's also email link there. Oh, also, everybody, sign up for the, the newsletter. Um, I keep you guys really updated there with the uh, news of the industry plus uh, deals of the day and what's going on at TAW. And it's all uh, uh, free to join. So please do. Absolutely. So. Thank you so much for taking the time. We wish sure. you the very, very, very best of luck with this venture. It's really interesting. I, from a personal standpoint, love what you're doing because I love seeing guys out there that are doing things that are different in the industry and, and trying to advance what the industry is doing. And uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll be sure to stay tuned. Also, let's, let's, let's round back in six months or, or, or somewhere about then and just, just follow up, see, see what's changed, see what's new. Because like, I'd love to, I'm guessing like, like any, like you and I are doing right. We have to be nimble. We have to adjust to where we see good opportunities to make our businesses and our, you know, this, this industry a better place. So I'd love to, I'd love to follow back up with you in, in a couple months. Please do. I, um, I thank you for asking me. I, I I've really enjoyed this. I'd love to come back anytime. Right on. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Next to that is that little bell. If you hit that little button, we're going to alert you every single time that we put up a new video. And don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and uh, be sure to follow everywhere Tim is at and check out Talk About Watches. And thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. And Tim, thanks again for joining. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers.